joining us for this very special Fango Convo panel. Today we have the star of Monster Hunter, Mila Jovovich. Did I say that right? You did. did. Okay, you, yes. Thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. And director, producer, writer, Paul W.S. Anderson. Yay. Yay. Good that correct as well. I no. Did I, I? I was like, is it Paul? Am I doing this right? Okay. Paul Anderson. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Paul. All right. Um, well, I have to say, I got the opportunity to watch Monster Hunter. This thing had way more jump scares and gross outs than I was expecting. And I feel like every time I felt like I knew where it was going, you did something and I was about like, spider babies, are you? No spider babies. I totally, those are not disgusting at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like out loud, like yelling at my TV and my dogs were looking at me like I'm nuts. And I'm like, what the hell? Like every few minutes. <laughs> So I feel like that just tells me that you probably had a lot of fun making this, which I just really appreciate. Oh, are you kidding? It's so much fun. I, I mean, I know Paul's been a big fan of this game for over a decade. And, you know, I'm just lucky enough that uh, I was in the final iteration of his many scripts that he's written over the past 10 years for <laughs> me. Well, I think I had more fun making it than than Mila had being put in it in all these <laughs> situations. I mean, she had to go into the spider cave, not me. Right. Into the slime and all the dirt and all the goo. She got to get uh, kicked around by Tony Jaa. Well, listen, T.I. had the hardest job because he, you know, had to spider end up babies. having the spider babies. So, oh. Oh, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part, I was like, mm, like... <laughs> Oh God, amazing effect. Well, listen, that's, uh, you know, like many people, that's one of my worst fears is spiders. So to be in the spider cave was just one of the worst experiences ever. <laughs> At the same time, so much fun because it was one of the only sets that we have in the movie. Like we shot everything on location in some of the most incredible alien looking landscapes you've ever seen. But this particular sequence was done on a stage and it was spectacular. I mean, the art department had literally done these suspended mazes like up in the air that you could climb through and actually explore like these spider tunnels. It was so creepy and amazing. Yeah, it was a real labyrinth. That had to be enormous. Also, that was my favorite set was the nest that was horrific and amazing, but it had to be huge. It was huge. It literally was like an airplane hangar of these tunnels like made out of like you know, bones and pieces of, I don't know, it was like, like how birds make a nest, but like tunnels, it was crazy. Is it feel good cuddly stuff? <laughs> <laughs> and the first time Mila came, I mean, she knew it was going to be unpleasant and she'd have to fall out of this kind of like, out of, out of this cocoon and it would be a bit slimy and gross and claustrophobic. But then she discovered there was a huge pool of slimy water beneath her as well. <laughs> <laughs> Break my fall. She's like, oh, great. You know, you had to just put this beneath me. I kind of feel like you were just writing sequences. Like what, like horribly disgusting things can I put her in? And then what can she fall into that's disgusting after that? <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, I think every movie he tops himself into like what insanely gross and scary situation and highly, highly uncomfortable situation <laughs> in next. Well, you handle it well. You're such like a he, badass he, final my girl. My husband and the father of my children, I would think he really didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's cathartic, you know, just putting you in like slime and disgusting, horrible situations. <laughs> Makes up for my cooking at home. <laughs> spider babies, spider baby casserole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's breakfast. <laughs> so I really love, like you are so at home and watching you do like, glam high fashion sort of things and then we see you covered in muck and kicking ass as like a badass final girl and I mean you're no stranger to physically demanding action sort of roles but was there anything particularly challenging about this one? Um, You know for me I've always loved like training for action films and I mean ever since I was a kid I, I feel like I was kind of raised like a boy and I guess never really saw girls like me represented on screen. So, uh, you know, when I got a chance to do action movies, I, I really uh, put my heart and soul into the training aspect, into doing the stunts, into really believing in these worlds because uh, I, just, I just have so much fun doing it. Um, 
you know, but for this one in particular, it was really fun because I, I wasn't playing a supernatural being or I didn't have superpowers. I was just like a really badass real woman. And the fact is, those women are like make my character in Monster Hunter look like nothing. You know, the woman who inspired the character, her name is Captain Natalie Malou. And she's a real female army ranger that I met, who's a friend of ours now, who I interviewed during this process to kind of understand wow, the process that she went through to become an army ranger. And it's intense. I mean, it's so mind blowing what these people go through, what kind of mental um, fortitude you have to have to stay up for 48 hours during freezing temperatures to be able to to deal with the physical aspects, to the mental uh, anguish that they go through to get their ranger badges, you know, it it makes my character look like like small fry. To be <laughs> that is so cool. That is so badass. And is it right you actually went to boot camp for this as well to prepare for this role? Well, I actually spent a few days um, at Fort Irwin, which is a army base about three hours outside of Los Angeles. And they do these like real life uh, simulations of like war and what soldiers would um, experience going abroad. And, um, you know, they have actors like playing different characters and some soldiers are attacking you. You're having to defend yourself. And, you know, I was part of these simulations. And uh, it was it was mind blowing because, you know, I, I learned to be a part of a team. I learned what it was to really like depend on people to, to have my back. But at the same time, it was really funny because uh, one of the one of the exercises is you have to clear a room and you go in with your team and everybody has to like make verbal commands to each other to say that, oh, we cleared this room. But what I didn't realize and everybody else knew was that one of the actors who was like pretending to be dead on the floor was actually alive and like at the last oh. second he like got up and like shot me oh my god and everyone's oh. like oh you're dead <laughs> and I couldn't believe it like literally you know to experience that that like wow I wasn't aware and and and, the, and they did give you some warning to like look out for people that mm -hmm. potentially are hiding or whatever but you know I died and everybody was laughing at me it was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> You didn't demand take two. Well, yeah, I, <laughs> I actually did. I actually did demand take two. <laughs> well, back to one. Let's take take two on that. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was it was extraordinary to be able to be a part of it, to feel a part of a team like that was just beautiful. I mean, really, really something that I'll keep with me for the rest of my life. That is so badass, really. <laughs> so, did the rest of the cast participate in that as well? Um, well, actually, the the woman that, you know, pretty much I took my character and who inspired my character, um, Natalie Malou, she flew down with her husband and they're both army rangers and they were our military advisors on the movie and they trained all of the actors, um, you know, and they they had us act as a team and we did different exercises together. And, um, you know, it was it was amazing, like for me on a personal level, you know, I was trying to like live my life in a much more disciplined fashion, like a soldier would to even, you know, I, I wanted to deserve the right to play this part, you know, um, and just even to, in my own small way to wake up super early, three, four o'clock in the morning, train in the morning before work, and just to like, have that, that challenge to, to physically challenge myself in that sense was important because, you know, I knew that if I couldn't do this small thing, come on, like what they go through on a daily basis is so difficult. Like I have to be able to do this, um, even though um, to be honest, I don't normally like train every day <laughs> myself to do it just so I could feel stronger as a person. And both of, uh, both of uh, Natalie and Ed, our military advisors, they both took a small cameo role in the movie. And these are both, these are both soldiers who've been in war zones and under fire. And they both said the same thing, which was being in front of a film camera was the most terrifying thing that ever. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, one of them did get eaten by a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's tough. I would imagine, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, his terror was appropriate. <laughs> um, talk to me about locations. You used primarily 
practical, like I know there's CGI for the monsters, but locations, I know you were big on using practical actual places, right? Well, we had to, we obviously had to make the monsters CG because they're these giant creatures. If, right. if it was an option to kind of breed giant monsters and have them fight and film it, <laughs> on that. I was never allowed you to breed giant monsters. <laughs> Like no monsters could be harmed in the making of monsters. I guess. <laughs> turn it into an amusement park, like a Jurassic Park situation. You get in Humvees and go look at the monsters now. <laughs> so cool. So once we'd committed to obviously doing the creatures CG, I wanted absolutely everything else in the movie to be as real as possible. And one of the things that had really impressed me with the video game were these amazing landscapes. And I wanted to shoot the landscapes for real so the audience could really feel immersed in this brand new world that we take them to. And uh, it just so turned out that the, the most amazing landscapes tended to be the most inhospitable and the most remote. So we were shooting literally hundreds of miles away from the nearest habitation um, with the cast and crew living in tent villages. And uh, during the day, temperatures like insanely boiling hot. At night, it would drop below zero, so it'd be freezing cold. Big storms would come up and blow away all the tents. You knew why people didn't live there. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was very, very challenging, but the landscapes and the look for the movie, I just think is incredible. And it was also, I think, really useful because I know, you know, all the actors agreed, even though it was really challenging and and I, on the day, everyone was like, I can't believe we're here. And it's like <laughs> and my eyes hurt and it's so hot and it's so cold. But in the end, we had to struggle so much and it really made us feel like one with our characters, you know, because it what you know, when you're in a studio, you can hear a pin drop. Here you've got the environment around. It's so difficult to even move because it's so hot and there's sand and you have to run through it. And you know, Paul is like shooting us with like sand cannons and it's like <laughs> But it was amazing because you really felt like your characters would in the movie. It made it much easier to imagine this world coming to life. Yeah, I imagine that it would lend itself to tapping into that. You actually are in these harsh environments and just kind of experiencing that. And then you go to shoot and it's like, yeah, I did sleep really shittily in a tent last night with like sand blowing and tents blowing away. And then you go and shoot and it's like, yeah, I'm kind of like living what the character is living in a sense. Our editor stayed in Los Angeles, so he never he never came to any of these locations. Oh. And uh, when he got the footage, he would see the way Mila looked and the way Tony Jaa looked, and he called me and he said, God, they look fantastic. You look like you've beaten the shit out of them. What are you doing with them? Are you <laughs> kind of using eye drops to make their eyes all red? And they said, no, we're just beating the shit out of them. <laughs> Very like, method. Really hard lives. <laughs> yeah, literally, Lenny and I both got sunburnt eyeballs. Oh like, my god! The last month of the movie, it was like crazy. I looked it up. I couldn't because my eyes were red and I could hardly open them for days. And I was like, "What's happening?" It's not just because I'm tired, because I am tired, but this is different. And there <laughs> is like an actual like itis, like I don't remember what it's called, but it's some sort of something itis, and it's a sunburning of your eyeballs. That's a real thing. Wow. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. And you can't put sunscreen in your eyes. You know? <laughs> so it's like hard. And, you know, we didn't wear sunglasses. Paul was always walking around with a big smile with his sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know why you're so upset. Check out my itis free hey. eyes. And I <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there's a really cool, speaking of Tony Jaw, there's a really cool sequence, a uh, fight sequence between the two of you. What was that like preparing for that in the beautiful choreography? It's very elegant, but badass at the same time. You know, I mean, fighting with Tony is such an honor and such a humbling experience because, you know, I've had 20 years of experience like making action films, but to work with somebody who literally is like a real life superhero is, is amazing. I mean, he doesn't need wires. Like he does parkour, like he, is so trained as a martial artist that he does all of this stuff literally in the few moments when you're talking to him and he'll like do a backflip like <laughs> like that good and um so I mean because I knew I couldn't compete with that especially because I would need wires to do these kind of uh these kind of flourishing kicks and things like that we really decided to like put two different styles of fighting together so you have Tony who's 
doing these incredible gymnastical martial arts. And then of course I'm US military trained. So I'm just kind of like trying to pull him down out of the sky and like take it <laughs> like a choke hold. And, you know, it was like two culture, two different cultural styles of fighting, like coming together, which actually was great. It, it, it made a lot of sense and it, it looks really good because they're such a contrast to one another. Mm -hmm. It, it played really, really fun coming across on camera. It was beautiful, like a dance, but like you said, it's like these two warring styles and you're pretty evenly matched too. So that was cool. You know, no one was absolutely beating the shit out of the other one. So you're just like, oh God, oh. And then he just like spins just like 50 million times in the air. And you're like, what is he doing? You like grab him and pull like, him down. Like, <laughs> no wires, no, no wires. wires. That jumped. is insane. <laughs> But how fun to like just participate in that too and watch him just do and just go nuts like that. <laughs> I mean, unreal, unreal to see that kind of talent in real life. I mean, that, you know, it's always, you know, I guess part of like what makes, what, what like makes these movies so fun for me is to imagine myself being able to do all of these superhuman mm -hmm. things, but then to actually see Tony like doing them in real life is just like, it, it it's def it's deflating as well because you're just like, oh, no. <laughs> like like you, you know I imagine Tony like making breakfast for his kids at home and like you know flipping to the fridge and, <laughs> you know doing like a back walkover to make pancakes and like, <laughs> that good you know and it, it makes it look so easy just a just a normal Saturday morning making pancakes that's oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the weapons were really cool in this. So I know in the game, you, as a game player, you're creating weapons from the monsters that you kill and you brought that to life in the movie. So you have these really cool weapons and you have those double blades. Was that, was that easy or difficult for you to learn to wield those? <laughs> um, you know, obviously like one of the incredible fan favorites in, in Monster Hunter is the weapons, you know, they're bigger than life. They're, they're just you have to be kind of not human. And of course, as a game character, you're not human, so you can wield <laughs> these weapons, but it was definitely a challenge in real life because they are so massive and so heavy. Um, it definitely took a lot of training on, on, for me, I mean, Tony, of course, it was like super easy for him to do anything. <laughs> but for me, it definitely took a lot of training to learn to work with these swords so that I could hold them up for more than a few seconds without my arms like shaking. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, 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 I was doing a lot of practicing with them to kind of build my strength up. Well, you made it look very easy and effortless just to well, let you know. That's all, that's all him. That's all. <laughs> that's all him doing this movie magic too. That was so. teamwork. But the both of you, you made it look just like, I'm like, oh yeah, she was just born with these things in her hands and she just knows how to do this. It's fine. Well, the <laughs> hardest part was when the, the dual blades, when like in the game, you like charge them and they kind of blow up and, and, and burst into flame. Yeah. You could do like these super moves. But of course in real life, when they burst into flame, like they had to give me like a different set of swords with an actual pipe with gas inside that like, you oh. know, puts real fire. And so on top of these huge swords, then they would have like a pipe inside with gas that would make them even more heavy. <laughs> oh my gosh, that and, was- and, and we're outside and the wind is blowing. So yeah. The flame oh, <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing! I love that. Yeah. As he's just watching, it was, it like, was yes, really funny though. I mean, it was, it, was, it was crazy. It was amazing. It was actually good because it was so freezing at night that that we were all grateful to have the fire from the swords. So cool. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I got it. <laughs> Bring your s'mores. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> all right, that's all the time I have. Thank you guys so much. This was amazing to have the chance to sit and chat with you. Oh, thanks so much, Angel. You have right. a great day. All right, thank you so much. Monster yeah. Hunter, everyone go check it out. Goodbye. <laughs>
Where the hell are we? That lightning, it hit those markers and it took us somewhere. Wow. Guys! So what? Are we like Guardians of the Galaxy now? On our six! Yeah, bros. Officially above my pay grade. I don't care what those creatures are. We destroy them and close the gateway. Yes, I'm getting us all home. 